process. Um, okay, so, so, without further ado, Mr. Kevin Hanks. Cheers. As you can clearly tell, I hate Deadpool. I hate him. I love him so much, I hate him. This is Deadpool, it's in my pocket. All right, come, come, check, come check him out later. We'll put him up here. We'll put Deadpool right here. He's, uh, he protects us all, doesn't he? Doesn't he? Come on, get, get in there, get in there. Get Deadpool, all right. All right, guys. It's a beautiful day, isn't it? Do you know why it's a beautiful day? Who can tell me right now why it's a beautiful day? I'm coming to you, hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on. We're being quiet right now. This is Brandon's time. Brandon? Brandon, why is it a beautiful day right now? Nobody say anything. Just listen to Brandon. Why is it a beautiful day? I think it's a beautiful day because um, we get to see you too. Oh, brother, thank you very much. I think it's a beautiful day because I get to see you, homie. Thank you to see you. Now, somebody else tell me why it's a beautiful day. Right here. I'm coming to you. Hold on. Here we go. I'm coming, I'm coming. I'm coming. Oh, we're not talking. We're not talking. We're quiet. When somebody else is talking, we're quiet. All right, brother, what's your name? Isaac, why is it a beautiful day? It is a beautiful day because we are all, we are all blessed by God today. Yes, I love it. Right, right there. That's your opinion. That's how you feel. That's right. All right, all right. Tell me why. Why is today a beautiful day, miss? Everyone's quiet when she's talking. It's her time. Why is it a beautiful day? Yeah, you have to say it's a beautiful day because. We're all here, we're all alive. We're all here, we're all alive. I need, I, all right, all right, yes, we're all here, we're all alive. I need two more beautiful days. I need one beautiful day from up there. I need one beautiful day from over here. I'm gonna go over here first because it's closer. That makes sense, logically speaking. Okay, so here we go. All right, what's your name? Brayden. Bra your name is Brayden? Yeah. Did you know his name was Brayden? No. Did you collaborate on this effort? What? Did you? Did you it's okay, he's okay. Your name is Brady. You sure? Are you sure? And your name is Brady, right? Do you guys know each other? No. Why not? That's ridiculous. Look, come, go, come eat him. Come on. 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 Yeah, there we go. You got you. All right, now. Now, hold on. Let's just figure this out. Let's do the math, okay? Your name is? Brayden. And your name is? Brayden. And you don't know each other? No. Well, not, now you do. Gosh darn it. All right, come on. One more. I need to be right there. In the, in the uh, what shirt is that? Quiet, please. What does your shirt say? Cleveland Indians. Cleveland Indians. That's a, that's, a, that's a basketball team, right? The basketball team? He doesn't even know who the Cleveland Indians are. That's ridiculous. All right, so why is it a beautiful day? Shout it out loud. What's your name and why is it a beautiful day? Because we didn't go out of school. Are you sure? Yeah. How do you know? I'm 
we have the tradition of loving baseball, you know? It's a fresh rock. Talking, we're quiet. Go ahead. Yeah, and uh, you know, there's a baseball team based out of Cleveland, and uh, you all may know uh, Cleveland Cavaliers. Now, somehow the Deadpool shoes came untied, so I have to fix that before I fall. So, talk amongst yourselves. Do any of you want to know why I believe every single waking moment of every single day I breathe this air is a beautiful day. Who wants to know why I think every single day we are given past today and today are beautiful? Who wants to know that answer? Just five of you, come on. Who wants to know that answer? All of you? Some of you still don't want to know the answer. I can see some hands running up. Who wants to know my answer? I need 100%, 100% uh, thank you. You got it, all right. Here's the deal. Here's the deal. It's a beautiful day, ladies and gentlemen, every day, because we all get to be here, and getting to be here is a privilege and a gift, no matter the pain you are in. I have arguably been in pain since the day I was born on 6th Street in a crack motel to biological parents who were on drugs prematurely. It's a beautiful day even that day was a beautiful day. Even my birth mom and my birth dad were beautiful people. They just happened to have substance use disorder to the 10th degree. And me and my brother were ripped from their arms, taken away because of that drug addiction. We were taken away at nine months, I was nine months old, he was nine months older than me if you catch my drift. That was a joke, people. He was nine months older than me, that means my parents were busy. All right, you get the point if you don't, ask somebody next to you. All right, the birds and the bees, kids, the birds and the bees, okay? All right, bring it back. It's a beautiful day. Even that day when I was ripped from my biological parents' arms was a beautiful day because that was the day my life was first saved. I was fed for the first nine months of my life, Kool-Aid, Coca-Cola, and sour milk. That was my diet for nine months because that's all my parents could steal. They had no feasible legal income. They did scored and sold drugs every day to keep a roof over my head. And the only reason I wasn't in the streets and homeless with my brother and my mom and dad was because they did scored and sold drugs to keep a roof over my head, which they left us in. They left us in a crack hotel every day to go do scored and sell drugs all day long. They left two infant boys on a bed by themselves barely clothed, lying in their own filth, screaming and crying not to be neglected every day. The first nine months of my life were hell. I was abused and neglected every day. I could have fallen on the concrete slab floor of a binding and cracked my head open and died. Any, every day of the week I could have fallen and died. I could have touched the metal object drug paraphernalia that was next to me on the bed every day and died. But it was still a beautiful day because I get to be here and getting to be here is a privilege and a gift no matter the pain you're in. Catch my drift? Yeah. I want to hear, hold on. Listen, when I ask you a question, I need 100% recognition and honesty. Do you catch my drift? Yeah. All right, good. I'm glad I catch yours too. It smells. Just kidding. That was a joke. Calm down. Don't get upset. Don't be offended. Nothing will offend you today, I promise. I mean, it will, but you shouldn't let it. Did you see that? I missed my mouth there. I was, I could have poured this all over myself. Just let me focus for a minute. Okay, guys, it's a beautiful day. And even the day I was ripped from my parents' arms was a beautiful day because it led to me being adopted by Patrick, Kevin Hines, and Deborah Joan Hines, my mom and dad. They came into my life. 
they, 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 they went to social services and they said, we want to adopt some kids, all right? And uh, they found me at the home of Peter and Deborah Muller. Peter was in the army, often had to be restationed. Any, any military kids? Raise your hand high if you're a military kid. If your parents are in the military, raise your hand high, I want to see you, I love you. Raise your hand high if you're a military kid. I want to see you, I want to see all of you. Raise your hand high, if you're, okay. Thank you for your parents' service. Round of applause. <laughs> Peter and Deborah Muller were my sixth or seventh foster home. When I bounced around from home to home before Peter and Deborah Muller, I was abused and neglected in most homes. My brother and I got a vicious strain of bronchitis in one of the homes we were neglected in. He had blonde, curly hair and looked just like me. Can you see it? My brother and I both got bronchitis in that home. He died. My only full-blooded brother, Jordash Silvera, who looked exactly like me with blonde curly hair, he died next to me. You see me crying about it? Am I crying about it? No. Am I complaining about it? No. Am I, I'm not going to say that word, that was a swear word, I won't say that, I won't get in trouble. I'm not crying, I'm not complaining. Am I sad? You bet I'm sad. Every day of the week, I'm sad that I never get to meet my brother. Every day of the week, I'm sad I never get to hold him in my arms and tell him I love him, not even once. We were, we were right next to each other every single day, every waking moment, every day. And, and, and then he died. What do you think that did to me? You think it hurt me? I can't hear you. You think it hurt me? Yeah. It hurt me the hell it hurt me. Yes, it did. It, after, when I went to Peter and Deborah Muller, I was violently ill every day. Physically ill every day, all day long. Every day. I had a bruise from the top of my sternum to the bottom of my abdomen, a black bruise from being malnourished for nine months. Now, you know, who knows what malnourished means? And one person to tell me what malnourished means. What's your name, Miss, and what does malnourished mean? My name is Katie. Katie, nice to meet you. What does it mean? It means you don't enough nutrients and food. You get a prize, bam, right there. That's not the prize, there's a real prize, I promise. All right. Malnourished means you're not fed good food to feed your mind and your soul and your body. It means your body deteriorates and fails. My body was failing at nine months of age. My body was failing at nine months of age. I had a black bruise from here to here. And here's what happened, all right? Peter and Deborah Muller took me in. The first good foster family I had in nine months. They were kind, they were compassionate, they were loving, they were caring, they were giving of their time. They housed many kids at the same time, boys and girls of all ages, all right? There were six or seven little girls, four or five little boys, and there was me. My name was not Kevin Hines, that is my adopted name. My biological name is Giovanni Gabriel Prasad Perales. Say it 10 times fast, go. No? 10 times? One of you, one of you, who can do that 10 times fast? Okay, I can't either, it's all right. <laughs> that was my biological name. And one faithful and beautiful day, like every day is beautiful, one beautiful day, a lovely young woman at the time named Deborah Joan Hines walked into the mother's door looking for a little girl to take home. Do I look like a little girl to you? Someone says, yes, you're in big trouble. Who said that? Oh, here we go. Here we go, right? Who said, I look like a little girl. It's okay, you're not really in trouble. It's all right, I'm not gonna, just tell me why you think I look like a little girl. I'd like to understand your, 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 your logic behind this, okay? Why do I, Kevin Hines, the great, look like a little girl? I was joking. Oh, okay, high five. I could be a little girl, you never know. Anyway, so here's the thing. Hey, I'm just being real, yo. All right, so, Deadpool, how we doing? What's that? I'm sorry, what? No, I don't have a taco. God, a chimichanga, yo. You have to eat something else. There are different food groups. Anyway, that was also a joke. Come on, that was a good one, you guys, jeez. Have you not seen the movie? Good Lord. It was a good joke, I don't care what you all say. Much better, okay. So no, I'm not, no, my mom walked, Debbie Hines walked into the mother's home, fully expecting to take home a little girl. There were six or seven in the house, but the first thing she saw on the carpet floor before her was red-headed, wavy-haired Giovanni. 
You see, I don't have the hair anymore. There's a reason for that, and I'm not telling you about it because it's none of your business. It doesn't grow back here. Anyway, you get the point. So, so here's the thing, okay? All right? Debbie Hines walks in their door, fully expecting to take a moment girl, but the first thing she sees in the carpeted floor before her is a red-headed, wavy-haired little boy, and she says in her journal of those days, which I read through and through, that was the moment she fell in love. And she went back to Patrick Kevin Hines, who I'm named after, and we're both named after Kevin Joseph Ryan, his uncle, my great uncle, the greatest man in my family, the patriarch of the family. And she went back to Patrick Kevin Hines and said, Patrick, let's take little Giovanni in. And he said, let's do it. Let's take him in. Why? Because he needs us. And I did. I needed them. I needed them to love me, to care for me, and to take care of me, and to raise me. Because I didn't have that, you know? And they took me in. And listen, here's the thing about Pat and Debbie Hines, okay? They could have had natural born children, right? They could have had their own children. But they decided to adopt three kids from three separate families into one and make a melting pot of a family. We did not look alike in the 1980s and people were confused. Like lots of people would stare at us all the time. My brother's black, I'm mixed, my sister's white, people were generally confused. Women would cross the street to talk to my mom if we were little kids and this is what they would do. Women would cross the street, they'd do a semi-circle around us like some kind of lion pride. They do this, they lean in like this, they come up to my mother, walk in with the three of us, and they do one of these. Then they do one of these. And they lean in and they say, excuse me, miss. How did all of that happen? And that's when my, that's when my mom would reply immediately, oh, you know, different fathers. <laughs> Which was epic because it was true, we all had different fathers. But they ran right back across the street like scared cats. It was hilarious. My mom is the best, all right? Let me tell you. Debbie Hines, let's all say it together on three. Debbie Hines is the best. Who's going to do this with me? Everybody better do it. Loud and proud like my mom is in the room. Debbie Hines is the best. One, two, three. Debbie Hines is the best. Yes, you are, Mom, and I love you. There it is. Thank you guys for doing that. That was very nice of you. Yes, I love my mom. And yes, I'm a mama's boy. And if you don't like that, that is your problem, not mine. All right. Anyway, so... So Debbie Hines walks into the mother's home and she takes me home and they adopt me and make me their son. But it took a two year hearing to adopt me. Why? Because my biological parents fought against them for custody of me. A two year hearing it took to adopt me, wherein my father, Martino Canales, my birth father, outside of the courtroom, assaulted an undercover. He was a criminal, my dad. He was a class A criminal and spent most of his time in jail. And outside of the court hearing where I was being adopted, he assaulted an undercover police officer and they killed him. And I don't blame him. I don't blame him. They had to kill him because he was going to kill them. And they had to do it. I read, the, I read the documents. They had to do what they had to do. But I'll never get to meet my dad. I'll never get to hold the man that made me and tell him I love him. Never. Never until I get to heaven, which I don't want to go to right now. I want to get there, you know, in like 112. Lying next to my wife, holding her hand like in the film of the notebook, and never watched twice or cried during once. All right, that's what I want to do. I don't blame that officer. He had to do what he had to do. He had to protect everybody else in that area. And he had to kill my dad. But you know what? Even that was a beautiful day. Why was it a beautiful day, even then? Why was it a beautiful day? Because they got to be there. He got to exist up until that point and he made me. And here I am with you. What's your name? Hurley? Will. Why does your shirt say Hurley if your name's Will? It's a company. <laughs> what is it? Hurley. And your name's Will? Are you a company? <laughs> you should be a company. Will, I am. Yeah, you like it? We just incorporated you. You're, you're, you're set for life. All right, thanks, Will. Will is a very, he is a very strong handshake. Dear God, Will. <laughs> Man, just grip a little less, okay? It's, it's, it's intimidating. All right. What was I talking about? My dad. My birthday. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. All right, so my birthday, Martino. He's gone, right? He doesn't get to come back, and that's that. And then my birth mother went into the courtroom one day after this happened, and she walked up to the, to the judge and the folks in charge, and she walked up to Pat and Debbie Hines, and she said, Patrick, Deborah, please take care of my son, 
I can do this no longer. She forfeited me to the system. But you know what? That was also a... I can't hear you. That was also a... Why was it a beautiful day? Because I got to be there. And here's why else. Because Patrick and Deborah Hines made me their son for the rest of their lives and gave me a, an existence I could love and care for like I never had. And they took me in, they made me their son, they made Joseph their son, they made Libby their, my, their, my, they made Libby, she's a girl, so what does that make her? Daughter, thank you, who said that? Raise your hand, who said daughter? Thank you very much, I really appreciate it. Thank you for your help. I need your help here today, guys, okay? We all need help sometimes. I need help a lot, okay? All right, so, so they made Libby my daughter and Debbie my, Debbie my son. Wait, that doesn't make sense. <laughs> okay, you can laugh. Um, they made Libby my sister, and Debbie was my mother, and I'm there. We figured it out. Good job, guys. That was good teamwork, okay? Teamwork makes the dream work. So, so Debbie and Pat Hines became my mom and dad at nine months of age. They adopted me on March 16th, 17th. They adopted me on March 17th, 1986. St. Patty's Day. Is that St. Patty's Day? Well, they adopted me on St. Patty's Day, 1986. Let's just go with that. Okay? And, um, and they adopted Elizabeth on the same day. Right? And then we took in Joseph a little bit later than that. And Joseph, my brother, has had the hardest life of anyone I've ever known. Okay? I had a hard life, right? Joseph had a harder life. Joseph's mom and dad were on crack cocaine when he was born. In, in, he was in the belly of the womb of, my mom, of his mom. And she did crack cocaine while he was in the belly. Right? Doesn't that seem messed up? Yeah. I can't hear you. Doesn't that seem messed up? Yeah. Doesn't that seem terrible? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and he came out shaking like a leaf for two months. He didn't stop shaking violently when we got him for two months. He was born premature, less than two pounds. Less than two pounds. My father Patrick could hold my brother in the palm of his hand like this. His rear would be here, his head would be there. Right here. We have my dad would just hold him and walk with him like this. Right? My dad's 6'1". He's a giant man. I know, you know, I know some of you are taller than 6'1". Here's the deal. I'm not. Okay? Right? I'm 5'7 and a quarter, which just so you understand, is a very tall 5'7". I'm 5'7 and a quarter. I am actually, truly, if you think about it, a very tall person. You all agree, right? Yeah. Thank you very much. Who said no? If you're not taller than me, you're in trouble. Don't show me if you're taller than me, Mr. Tall. God damn. <laughs> Who else said it? Oh, you're taller than me. That's, I mean, sitting down, you're taller than me. Dear God, that's not fair. What were we talking about? Anybody know? Anybody know what you're talking about? Oh, thank you. So my brother was born addicted to crack cocaine. He's had the hardest life of anybody I've ever known. He now has Asperger's syndrome. And, um... One thing Joseph is really good at is spelling. He was the spelling bee champion in his school for eight years in a row, all eight years of the school. And I hated it because I loathe spelling, right? This is what my little brother would do to me every day. He would give me a word to spell and then he would laugh at me when I got it wrong, right? So he would say, so right in front of my father, who's a very strict man, very strict man, he would say, uh, hey, Kevin, uh, why don't you do me a favor? And I'd say, yeah, Joseph, what do you need a favor? What, how can I help you? And he'd say, Kevin, I want you. And he'd pause, like, like a good kid. He'd go, uh, Kevin, I want you, in front of my dad, he'd look at my dad, he'd go, Kevin, I want you to spell atrocious. And my dad would say, yes, Kevin, why don't you spell atrocious? And of course I would try, I would try about 10 times, but I never got it right. And then Joseph would sit there smiling and laughing at me. What a little genius. He was a genius. He would read the Encyclopedia Britannica by book by book, one book at a time, in full, and he would do it out of order like a goofball. He'd be sitting down, he'd say, um, uh, Kevin, Kevin, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go for uh, Y today. And I said, what are you talking about, Joseph? What do you mean you're gonna go for Y? And he would say, I'm gonna read Y. I said, that doesn't make any sense, it's a letter. He'd say, Kevin, Look at the Encyclopedia Britannica shelf that your father made you. He said, you haven't read any of them. I'm going to read all of them. And I said, good for you. What do you want, a cookie? 
And then he would sit there all night long, all day long, and for two weeks he would read Y. And then he'd go, Kevin, I think I'm going to read Z today. And I'd go, okay, you're, you're really odd, but okay, fine. You know, and he would do that every day. He was a genius. Um, but he hurts every day, too, because he's lived with depression his entire life. Since he was a baby, he's had depression. A baby. A little tiny baby, he's been depressed. And you know what? He still has beautiful days every day. Why? We're there for him, he's there for us, and we love him, that's why. And my mom is taking care of him to the best of her ability, that's why. And we have nurtured him, and grown him, and taught him everything he knows, and that's why. He gets to be here, and that's a gift. When his mom did crack cocaine, he should have died in the womb, but did he? He was resilient, wasn't he? Yeah. He's the most resilient kid I know, isn't he? Yeah. yeah, and he's here today. I mean, he's not here, he's not right here, because if I said he was right here, you'd think something was wrong with me. Hi, Joseph. Hi, I'm just kidding. Also, a joke. Dear God, you guys are sleeping on me. All right. All right, enough nonsense. I think it's time to tell you the story I came to tell you, isn't it? Is it time for me to tell you the story I came to tell you? Yeah. All right, I think, I think so, too. Every single day, we get the privilege to awaken. It's a beautiful day. Every single millisecond we are given on this earth, past yesterday, it's a beautiful day because we get to be here. I almost didn't get to be here. I didn't get. To, I almost didn't get to meet any of you. On September 24th of the year 2000, I decided I was going to end my life, and it wasn't a true decision like you think of decisions. You know, I'm going to have a piece of pizza today. I'm going to put pepperoni on it. And I'm going to eat it. That's a decision. No, I didn't want to die. I believed I had to. I believed beyond a shadow of a doubt that I had not one other course to take but to die by these two hands from what's called lethal emotional pain. I thought I had to die, and I thought I was my family's greatest burden. I thought my entire family, who, who, who picked me out of 100 kids, I thought they hated me, and I thought they wanted me to die by my hands. Does that make sense? No. I need to hear you. I'm giving you my all. Give me yours. Does that make sense? No. Not by a long shot. I deserve this life until its natural end, and so do all of you. But I didn't know that back then. I thought I had to die. I believed I was useless. Who in this room has ever felt useless? Raise your hand, be bold, be bold. Be bold with me right now if you've ever felt useless. Okay, you guys felt useless? Did you, did, if you really felt useless ever in your life, raise your hand, hold it high. Tell me the truth, hold it high, I wanna see all of you. All right, you all felt useless. Do me a favor, you all, every single one of you in this room that raised your hand legitimately, quietly, carefully, come stand with me right here, right now. If you're bold enough, to tell me the truth, then you're bold enough to come stand behind me. If you felt useless in your life, come stand behind Quietly, we're doing it quietly. We're doing it quietly, guys. We're not talking, we're not laughing, we're not looking at people, we're walking down quietly. We're walking down, getting behind me quietly. Very, very, you guys are being quiet, I can hear you. Quieter, quieter than that. Come down slowly, come down carefully, watch, watch for your neighbors and get behind me. If you've ever felt useless. Take your time, come down quietly, calmly, if you've ever felt useless in your life. Quietly and calmly, come down and get behind me. Quietly and calmly stand there, no talking, we're just listening to the sound of my voice. We're not talking, we're not laughing at people, we're just quietly coming down until you're all behind me. I'm not gonna open my eyes until someone tells me that everyone that, is useless, felt, everyone that felt useless is behind me. Is everybody behind me? All right, I'll wait. I'm closing my eyes because my eyes hurt right now. Oh, that's too many people.
Do you understand the significance of this? The answer is yes. Do you understand the significance of this? Yes. I can't hear you. Do you understand the significance of this? Yes. I can't hear you. Do you understand the significance of this? Yes. Yeah. Is there a mathematician in the room by chance? A mathematician. A math teacher. What's your name, miss? What? Miss Newling? How many people is that, roughly? Estimate. I need a number, Miss Newling. Roughly. And I need, where's the principal? I need to see the principal right now. Is the principal here? Is there a director? Principal, come forward, please. Can you come here, principal? Come to me. Can we make some, can we, guys, make some room for the principal. He's important. He's very important. He's a very important man. Hi. Nice to meet you, sir. My name is Kevin Hines, if you didn't know. You are tall. Everyone's taller than me. What's your name, sir? Uh, Mr. Pierce. Mr. Pierce, do you see this? Doesn't that terrify you? Yeah. Yeah, right? Yeah. Okay. Let, let's, let's make a promise to them, okay? Where you're you're going to help me, Mr. Pierce? Pierce, yeah. Pierce or Pierce? Pierce. Your, your last name is Pierce? Pierce, yeah. Yeah. Kind of bad, isn't it? That is bad. That is the bad the good way. That's cool. Okay. All right, Mr. Pierce, go stand with your kids, please. Somebody hand me that Deadpool hat. Don't take my little Deadpool. He's alive. That was a joke. Good Lord, you guys are sleeping on me. All right. All right, here we go. Everyone who stood here with me, step forward to exactly where I am. Step forward to V. Make a V. Come on, keep coming. Keep coming all the way. All the way. Now stay right there. All right, now, guys, we're going to do something right now that is probably the most important thing you've done in your whole entire lives. We're going to say something together and we're going to all mean it, okay? We're going to say something together and we're going to mean it, okay? I can't hear you, okay? Okay. All right, I'm going to say the words. I want you to repeat after me. I want you to know it's true in your heart. I want you to know it's true in your heart. Are you ready? Yeah. All right, repeat after me, okay? I will. I will. You guys too. I will. I will. That wasn't everybody. Let's try it again. I will. I will. Never. Never. Die. Die. By my hands. I will fight the pain. I will fight the pain. In spite of the pain. In spite of the pain. I can't hear you. I will fight the pain. I will fight the pain. In spite of the pain. In spite of the pain. To thrive someday. To thrive someday. I will live this life. I will live this life. I can't hear you. I will live this life. I will live this life. Until my natural end. Until my natural end. Never to die, Never to die. By, my by my hands, no matter the pain, no matter the pain. That, I'm in. that I'm in. I choose, I choose to, commit to commit to life, to life. Until, I die. until I die of natural causes, of natural causes. Because, because I'm a gift, I'm a gift. To, this world. to this world. I'm a gift to everyone Everyone. That has ever come into contact with me. I am. I need to hear you. I am. I am. Supposed, supposed to be here. To be here. And God dang it. And God dang it. And God dang it. And God dang it. I am so damn cool. I'm so damn cool. I'm a boss. I'm a, I'm a champion. I'm the champion. I'm the best. I'm the best. I'm beautiful. I'm beautiful. I'm lovable. I'm lovable. I'm handsome. I'm handsome. I'm pretty. I'm pretty. I'm the best again. I'm the best again. And damn it. And damn it. If you don't believe me, don't believe that me. is your problem. That is your problem. And bullies of the world. Words. Stop hurting me with your words. Stop hurting me with your actions. Stop hurting me with your actions. Stop stepping on my toes in the hallway. Stop stepping on my toes in the 
Stop hitting your shoulders into my chest. Stop hitting your shoulders into my chest. Stop lying about me to other people. Stop writing things about me online that aren't true. Stop being a troll. Even if you're getting paid for it. Stop being mean. Mean people should be put all together in a pull pen and left there all by themselves to be mean to each other because damn it, they're good at it. Now, now, that was just me. <laughs> now, hear me. How much time do we have? Okay? Alright. Now, hear me. All of you, hear me loud and clear. Loud and clear. No, that's just me. It's just me. You're doing great, though. Good job. Do you know what the key to life is? Do you know? Do you, who knows what the key to life is? Anybody, raise your hand. Who knows the key to life? Okay, I'll tell you what the key to life is. The key to life is what my grandpa taught me. His name was Jack Paul. His biological name was John Paul, like the Pope, right? He would get a big ego. His dad did anyway, right? The name of John Paul, like the Pope, his dad had a big ego. All right. My grandpa's name was Jack Paul. He was a very tall man. He's about as tall as I am right now, but he was alive. How tall is this, that magician? How tall am I right now, roughly? Roughly. Seven feet? Yeah. He was not seven feet tall. <laughs> he was about six, seven, okay? Papa Jack was six, seven. I'm five, seven. You get my drift. He was tall. So, he was a whole foot, he was a whole foot. Wait, what is it? What's, it, what's it, ten feet? Ten inches. Ten. What am I trying to say? How tall is my? How much taller than me? Was me? Was how much? He was a foot. Thank you, sir. That's why you're fierce. All right. All right. So he was a foot taller than me. All right. And Papa Jack, when I was a baby, he would hold my core and press it in. He would take his fist and he would press in and he would say, Kevin, when it starts to hurt, I want you to say Uncle. When this starts to hurt you, say Uncle. And I thought it was a game. I thought it was a fun game we would play. And when it really, really hurt, I would say, uncle, I tried to hold out as long as I could. It would hurt like hell. I was a little kid. It would hurt like hell. And I'd be like, ah, ah, ah. I'd be like, okay, uncle, uncle, uncle. And he'd say, good job, every night. And I never understood why he did it until my mom told me why he did it years later when I was 12. He was trying to build my core muscles because I had the bruise from here to here. And my core was broken. My stomach was broken. The lining of my stomach was disheveled. It was it was dilapidated, it was, it was thin because I was fed Kool-Aid, Coca-Cola and sour milk. I had no stomach lining, you understand? So he would strengthen my core every day. Every day we went to my grandpa's house. I didn't know why we went every day, like some days we don't need to see him, you know what I'm saying? But we went every single day. And every single day he'd sit me in his lap and he'd strengthen my core and I didn't even know it. My core is strong as hell right now, all right? It's the strongest core in this room, I argue that. Anyone who has a stronger core, come see me, I'll prove you wrong, all right? All right, maybe you did answer that strong for me. Thank you very much for making me honest. I appreciate it. Jeez, good Lord. Okay, so my point is, Papa Jack helped save my life, didn't he? Yeah, he did, didn't he? He helped strengthen me and make me resilient, didn't he? You're all resilient too. You know why you're resilient? Because you're still here. I'm looking right at you. All of you are beautiful. Let's go, let's go, let's go see who's beautiful. You're beautiful, you're beautiful, you're beautiful, all of you are beautiful, all of you, you're beautiful, you're wonderful, you're amazing, you're, you're the best, actually, it's a great shirt. You're great, oh, nice jacket, he's, he's got the great jacket, you're a good man, you're a good man, what's your name? Caleb. Caleb, I knew your name was Caleb, I can tell by looking at you. Okay, you're, you're wonderful, you're amazing, you're the best, you're the best, that's what I'm just saying, you're the best, you're, you're all the best. You're all, you're all perfect, you're all perfect just as you are. You're all intended to be here to your natural end. Suicide is never the solution to your problem, it is the problem. Suicide is never the solution to your problem, it is the problem. Suicide is never your solution to the problem, it is the problem. Suicide! Is the problem. Say it with me. Suicide! Is the problem. No, no, say, say suicide. Say what I say. Three, two, one. Suicide! Suicide! Is! Is! is. Never! Never! The solution! The solution! To my problem! To my problem! It is! It is the problem. The problem. I will. I will never, never die. Die by my hands. By my hands. Now it's my turn. If any of you in this room don't believe what I just 
just said, what we all just said? If any of you in this room past today ever considered suicide again, would you do me a favor and look me up online and send me a message? Because I will do my damnedest to keep all of you here. Did you hear what I said? My email is kevin at kevinhinesstory.com. My YouTube is there. My email is there. You have it now. If you need me, I live by a motto. Here I am. Send me. If any of you in this room, is this a room? What is this? It's a gymnasium. It's a gymnasium. I always do that. I always call it a room. I mean, literally, it is a room, but it's not the room. It's, it's a gymnasium. Just to be clear, we have to be thorough here, okay? If anybody in this gymnasium slash room need my help, Personally, I give you my word, and my word is my bond. If you hit me up and ask Kevin Hines' story, if you email me at Kevin at Kevin Hines' story, I will get back to you. It will take me six to 12 months to do so. There's a lot of people that I tell this to, okay? But I will get back to you over time. I will be there for you, and you never have to die by your hands. You have to fight the pain, in spite of the pain, to thrive someday. If you need my help, I'll be there. That's a promise. That's a promise. I always keep my promises. Every one of them. All of my life, except when I was little and I was naive. I believe in all of you. I love all of you. And I know that's weird. We just met, but you know what? That's also your problem. I love you. Your family. And we are the healthiest social media family in the game. Let's say it together. On my three count, we are, not yet. Just let me say it. We are the healthiest social media family in the game. Are you ready? I need this to be louder than anything else. One, two, three. We are the healthiest social media family in the game. And you know what, you guys? I care about you genuinely at my core, which is very strong. I care about you right here. I care about each and every one of you. And when I leave this school, I never want to hear that someone from this class in this room died by their hands. You better call me first. Or email me. The, phone's, the phone doesn't work. Anyway, it's too many people call. I love you guys. I care about you genuinely. And I want you to be here tomorrow, okay? If everyone in the room would do me a huge solid and please stand firm with all of us today. Stand, stand up here in this room. If everybody who is standing that can fit would quietly and calmly, quietly and calmly and slowly come down to us right here, come down to us. Very slowly and organized. Starting over here, starting over here, starting over here. Come down quietly, organized and calmly to me if you want to. Come down if you want to be right here with all of us. Come down quietly, no, no, no use the stairs, use the stairs. That's dangerous. Oh God, oh, that, oh. I thought she was gonna fall. Oh, that's so scary. Okay, you're athletic. All right, guys, come down, come down. Come fill this space. Fill this space right here, please. Fill this space. Come on, guys, please, I'm begging you. Fill this space. Fill all this space. Come on. Come on, we're doing this together. Come on. Slowly, quietly, and calmly. Slowly, quietly, 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 quietly. That's not quiet. Quietly, quietly. Be quiet, please. We're not talking. We're not laughing. We're not talking. We're just coming down slowly and quietly. Slowly and quietly. Slowly and quietly. Faster, just kidding, slowly and quietly. Come on down. It's like a game show. We're all coming down. Take your time. Go slow. Don't bump into people. Take your time. Take your time. Now, you see this, guys? Oh, wait a Come on. Take your time. We got All we have is time. You know people who say, I don't have enough time? You know what they are? They're liars. People who say, I don't have time for you are liars. Everybody has time. It's the only commodity we really have is time. Time doesn't exist. It's not real. It's made up by mankind. We all have time. That's all we have. If you're here in front of me, Hurley, that's not your name. Jim, Ben, Matt, Cisco, Ed, Bill, Will. William, Will. I knew it. I got it right. Good job. Okay. Will, can I get on your shoulders? Because you're taller. I'm just kidding. That would be weird. Right. But I want to, seriously. All right. Well, I want to get on that guy's shoulders. That guy's tall. I was just tall. I was just tall. Are you serious? Let's go. 
He's almost as tall as me, and I'm standing on a chair. That's not fair. I was as tall as you once. I was as tall as you once, and then I, I shrunk. I'm not going to tell you how. It was a shrinking way. I, I invented it. It's a problem. Anyway, I was as tall as you once in my dreams, okay? All right, here we go. All right, guys, let's be serious, okay? What are we all doing here right now? Who said that? Come up here, please. You're, you're a quick-witted young lady. Come here. You stand on this chair with me. Not with me, by yourself. Be careful. All right, take the microphone. All right, what did you say we were doing? We are standing together. Why is that important? So we can help each other. Why is that important? Because we all have rough times. Why is that serious and important? Because no matter what, everybody has problems, and we need to be here for each other. Because if not, we'll all end up standing up here together. In pain, right? In pain. Let's not stand in pain anymore. I'm tired of pain. Can I give you a hug? Yes. We'll come down first. Twenty-three second hugs release oxytocin in the brain that make you feel better. Twenty-three second hugs release oxytocin in the brain that make you feel better. If you are comfortable with it, find someone to hug right now for 23 seconds. If, if, if you're comfortable, if you're comfortable. time do we have? Five minutes. That is all the time we need. God, he's fierce, isn't he? He's so fierce. Mr. Fierce is fierce. Fierce, 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 fierce. Mr. Sorry. It just rhymes with so many things. What else does Pierce, fierce rhyme with? Okay. We got five minutes left. We're going to wrap it up. And we're already going to do the most important thing we can do all day, okay? Okay, this is the most important thing we can do all day. I know I said that before, I lied, this is the most important thing we can do all day. On my three count, we're gonna end this thing together as a team, and one thing we're never gonna do again, one thing all of us are never gonna do again in this, in this school is ever, no matter what, no matter why, no matter who, no matter where, we're never gonna bully each other again. Do you understand me? We are never going to say mean, hateful things online because they kill people. 60%, 60, Cyberbullying. Are you listening to me? Everyone listen very carefully. No talking at all. Cyberbullying is 63% more physically dangerous than physically bu physical bullying. Did you hear what I said? Cyberbullying is 63% more dangerous than physical bullying to the end of life of another student. You cyberbully someone, they kill themselves, that blood is on your hands. That blood is on your hands. I'm not blaming you. I'm not having to give you a guilt trip. I'm saying stop it, God dang it. Stop hurting each other with your words and actions. You're telling people. Do you know what they did to me in grade school? Do you know what they did? They pulled my ears out from behind me as hard as they could and then said whistle, little N-word whistle every day. Because I'm part black and they weren't. Tony Guerrero held me from behind while Mike Ramirez and Tony Rivera punched me in the gut so no one would see the bruises on my strong core. I'm lucky it was so strong they punched me every day. The eighth graders called me Little Red N-Word every single day. Hey, come here, Little Red N-Word. Hey, get over here, Little Red N-Word. Hey, Little Red N-Word. And they told me it was a term of endearment. I went home to my father. I went home to my dad and said, hey, dad, guess what they called me in school today? I was four. 
I told my dad what they called me in verbatim. I said the real word. He said, Kevin, don't ever, ever say that again. I said, what's wrong, Dad? It's a term of endearment. Then he said, Kevin, I'm coming to your school tomorrow. You show me who said that to you. He took care of them. You bet he did. He's back for Kevin Hines, the scariest man I know. They never said it again. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes. yes. What are you never, ever, 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 ever going to do ever again to anybody in this school? Oh, I can't hear you. That wasn't all of you. Some of you are lying. What are you never going to do past today to each other? Boy. What are you never going to do? Because it's wrong. It's wrong. It's mean. It's spiteful. It's hateful. Just because you're in pain doesn't mean you have to put other people in pain, right? right. right. Just because I'm in pain doesn't mean I have to hurt other people, right? Right. You can roll your eyes, you can laugh at me, you can think I'm stupid, but you're wrong. Never bully each other again past today. Mr. Fierce, Pierce, sorry. <laughs> Mr. Fierce, I want you to quantify the data behind when the bullying stops at this school. Do you understand? I want you to, uh, the mathematician, where's the mathematician? Where'd she go? Mathematician, Ms. Hurley? Ms. Hurley? Ms. Hurley? Ms. What's her name? Oh, I didn't understand. Ms. What? Ms. Dooling, can you come up here, please? I want to hug you. <laughs> Make a way for Ms. Dooling, please. Make a path. Make a path for Ms. Dooling, please. Make a path. Make a path. It's like the waters are crossing in the, in the River Nile. Okay, all right. All right, hold on, guys. We're not talking. We're not talking. We're not talking. Ms. Dooling, is it? Dooling, so sorry. Ms. Dooling, it's a pleasure to meet you. You're a gifted individual. Can I tell you a secret? And please don't be mad at me. I loathe math. I absolutely loathe it. I hate it with a, a, a fiery passion, but but Ms. Ms. Dooling, yeah. I love you. You're an amazing person, okay? And and I, I like that you like math, but don't teach it to me because I won't listen. Okay? All right now, Miss 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 um, thank you, Miss Dooling. I need you to do me a favor. After today, I need you to quantify the data of when they all stop bullying each other forever. All right, I'm holding you all accountable for your actions. You hear me? I'm holding you accountable for all of your actions, all the posts you put online that have hurt people in this room. I'm holding you accountable. I'm not blaming you. I'm not guilting you. You're not a bad person. You're a great person if you're a bully. You're a great person. You just don't know it yet. My grandpa taught me the greatest life value lesson I've ever learned. He taught me to do the right thing all day, every day, no matter what anybody else is doing to me. Did you hear what I said? Yes. What? Yes. Did you hear what I said? Yes. He taught me to do the right thing all day, every day, no matter what anybody else did or said to me. Are we gonna do the right thing from now on? Yes! All day, every day? Yes! You're damn right, because if you don't, I'm coming back and I'm gonna get upset. <laughs> I love you guys. Now repeat after me, this is the end of this presentation. Repeat after me on three. You're gonna say at the tops of your lungs, be here tomorrow. Be, not yet, be here tomorrow. For all the people in this room, Jim, in that kind of pain. Be here tomorrow for everybody in that kind of pain. Do you guys, are you allowed to hold your mobile devices in your pockets? Yes? yes? That's perfect. Okay, Whatever, no matter what your teachers say right now, pull all your mobile devices out of your pockets and press record on a social media live feed or press record on your camera. You're not gonna wanna miss this, I promise. You're not gonna, if you miss this, you're gonna, if you sleep on this, you'll be really upset with yourself. Quiet, 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 quiet. Quietly take out your mobile devices. Quietly tell all you, no, that's not everybody. Come on, everybody. Some of you aren't doing it because you're mad at me. Why are you mad at me? Why are you mad at me? Why are people not taking out their mobile devices if they have them? Are you mad at me? What did I do to you? I don't know. All right, here we go. That's enough, that's enough. All right, here we go. Focus, focus. On my three count, I want you to record live feeds or I'm going to record now. On my three count, we're going to yell at the tops of our lungs, be here tomorrow for all the people in that kind of pain. For everyone in that pain, be here tomorrow. Louder and prouder than you ever have before. On three, be here tomorrow. One, two, three! Be here tomorrow! All right, that was okay. That was okay, but it wasn't great, all right? I need you to be louder and prouder like their lives depend on it, and some of them do. Their lives depend on it. One, two, three! Be here tomorrow! All right, that was great but you need to be louder and prouder than the United States Marines and the United States soldiers that did it 10 weeks ago. There were 4,000, there were 4,000 Marines and soldiers total that did it 10 weeks ago. And they were way louder than you. I need you to prove to them that you're louder than Marines and soldiers and they are loud. 
and there were 4,000 of them. How many of the math teachers were already? How many people are in this room right now? 700, 800. All right, there's 800 of you. You need to be louder than 4,000 Army and Marines. One, two, one, two, three! That was definitely louder than them. Congratulations. Round of applause. My friends, my friends, my family, be here tomorrow and every goddamn day after that, no matter the pain you're in, all you have to do is get to the next day. That's all you have to do. 24 hours is all I need. All right? If you need my help, add Kevin Hines, Story, Holly's Boy, and do me a damn favor and join the vlog. Thank you very much.